incorporating it into the resume and into your interview. There's so many crazy ways to utilize it. So um, take that assessment. If you haven't yet, we have it in there a couple times. And um, we would love to have you go ahead and take that. All right, so good morning. Let's uh, start now, Start kind of start over. Uh, what we'd like to do to do our best to network is have you drop some information in the chat box to get to know each other a little bit. So my name is Jessica Pierce. And I am dialing in right here from Chandler, Arizona in my home office. And so why don't you drop in the chat box. We'll have your name. Make sure that your name is showing. Um, and you can rename yourself. And Sheila will talk to you about that in just a second. Make sure your name is showing. Uh, and then tell us where you're calling in from today and what kind of industry or job that you are looking for. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. So good morning, Susan, Scottsdale. Good morning, Penny. Chandler also. Um, North Phoenix, Beth. Sarah, hi from North Phoenix. So we have people coming in. We have someone, oh, Carolyn from San Diego. Welcome. Uh, so happy to have you all here. The other thing we're going to do this morning is if you, while we're talking today, if you can go out and grab your LinkedIn URL, we are going to you drop your LinkedIn URL into the chat as well, because that's a way that we can continue to connect each other with each other even outside of the events. Now, something to keep in mind is when you dropped in, drop in your URL, take a look at Alan and Joanna who have done it, it is a clickable link. And so we need you to make sure it's a clickable link because, because of security features, we have taken off the ability to copy and paste the chat in any way. And so it needs to be a clickable link so people can click right on it and it'll take them out to LinkedIn. To do that, you just open up your browser and type in um, LinkedIn. And then I usually just say the easiest thing to do is click on your picture. The picture will take you to your profile and whatever that URL is in the top, Copy that and drop it right in here in the link in the chat box. So we will make sure to connect with you, connect with us, connect with each other. And um, that'll be our one of the ways we can network this morning. All right. So um, Sheila, why don't I drop it over to you for just a minute to uh, go over some tech stuff. Beautiful. Okay, good morning. I'm Sheila Colum, and I'm joining from the border of Gilbert and Chandler. <laughs> um, and I'm happy to connect with all of you on LinkedIn as well. Uh, one thing I want to say for our friends that might be joining on Facebook, if you want to come on over to Zoom, you can engage in our chat and be talking with more of us. There's more of us here on Zoom. So I've put the Zoom meeting ID on screen, and that's for the Facebook people if they want to come on over to Zoom. Um, Toward the end of the event, I have some polling questions that I put up. And just to let you know, as soon as you answer the question, there's only four. As soon as you answer the question, the window goes away for you. Um, and right now, if you have any questions, make sure that you are in the chat. Go ahead and ask. Um, I've got a fabulous team of volunteers as well as Jessica and myself are watching the chat. If you have any questions as we go, go ahead and ask them in there and we'll see what we can do. Um, make sure that you use that chat to be your networking tool, right? We can't get together in the same room, but we can chat. So let's, let's do that. You can um, chat individually to a person or to the whole group. Um, and there's a little drop down at the top of the little chat window where you type that you can select the person and then you can one-on-one -on -one chat or you can chat to the whole group. You can also just um, change how the videos are displayed on your screen, depending on what device you're on. Uh, wherever you're seeing my picture right now, like above it should be a black toolbar with little icons. And if you play with that, it'll change how many and where those are displayed. You can move it around your screen um, so that you can still see the slides, but see the video. So it's up to you. And speaking of video, we love when people put their videos on and we can see your smiles. So thank you, thank you for all the brave ones. I appreciate it. It's good to see you. Uh, also, we do have closed captioning available. If anyone is in need of that, go ahead and private message me or text our Career Connectors line and we will get that activated for you. And in your toolbar, there's a CC. You could click once we activate it, it'll start showing up. Thanks. All right. Awesome. I love the, everything going on in the chat already. Um, Montreal is making a presence here today. So hi. <laughs> Somebody's here from Montreal. Welcome. Glad to have you on. Um, I've seen a couple people say stuff about DISC. Um, 
I am just super excited because I have also been certified since uh, probably about 2000. And that's how Marlene and I originally met. And so I'm just super excited to have um, the, this here today. All right. So let's see a couple other things. Uh, something else we'd love for you guys to talk about in the chat is if you um, have some expectations of what you'd like to learn today, like why are you here? What, what are your expectations for today? Drop that in there and we will be monitoring that and looking at, we'll try and um, re, uh, respond to them. We'll ch if we don't, we'll try and do something after to, to respond to that. But what are your expectations for today? What are you hoping to accomplish and to learn? And let's see if I have anything else. Um, I think Sheila went over everything. So uh, here's our agenda today. We are gonna have Marlene Lundy talking about DISC and understanding you and the value that you bring. And then our two hiring companies today are Equality Health and Early Warning. And then at the end, I will be closing it out with some resources and some additional information for you guys. So, all right, let's go ahead and welcome Marlene onto our virtual stage. She has over 25 years of experience in event management, as well as mastering positions in training and development project management, technical and customer support, and executive engagement. Marlene's ability to manage high-level professionalism while remaining approachable to every member of an organization makes her master certification in the DISC behavioral profiling tool exceptionally useful. Her personal and professional passion for helping others is immediately apparent to all who meet her. Marlene and I were originally certified together back at, in our Intel days. Um, she is be, she's a master certified DISC instructor and trainer, and she really understands and grabs hold of the behavioral styles. So please help me give a virtual welcome. Virtual clapping looks like this, by the way. Um, to, let's give a big welcome to Marlene Lundy. Lundy, welcome. You are muted. I was muted. I think that's the that is the um, the meme for the year. You're muted. <laughs> Phrase of the year. Hi everyone. Uh, Jessica, thank you so much for having me here. Sheila, you guys have done a great job, and I, it's just an honor and a pleasure to be here today. Um, and <clears throat> thank you for the intro. Uh, I, I think I think whatever uh, universe brought you and I together was just perfect and um our, our days at intel was was absolutely fantastic in delivering disc and um with our the management training program that we were a uh, part of together and uh, i love that we've been able to stay connected over these years because that was a long time ago girl <laughs> a long time ago <laughs> so i am really excited to present uh, disc to this organization because it is something that is about you Everyone is unique. Everyone is special. And <clears throat> excuse me, I think society's made it really easy for us to forget what we're good at. And I love how DISC has been able to uh, bring it to our own attention because it's the questions that we answer in the assessment process. There's no emotion attached to it. There, it's very non-biased. And it's simply based on what it is you answered for your preferences. And when you get the report back, if, if those of you who haven't taken it yet uh, and you want to wait till after the presentation, that's okay. Um, <clears throat> it, it gives you this sense of way more than you ever thought you could know about yourself, but yet you knew it, you knew, like you know it inside, you know it in your gut, but for you to read it about yourself, it's like, revolutionary and it's eye-opening and it resonates completely different than what you ever thought and that's the, that actually was the first time when the first time I did it in 2000 it was like whoa it blew my mind and I just became incredibly passionate about it I was uh, the big proponent in bringing an intact team session into Intel so the that organization can actually reap the benefits of people understanding themselves and then in turn understanding each other so what we're going to talk about today is um, uh, what is DISC? So some of you may be familiar with it, some of you may not. Um, some of you may be familiar with other tools, uh, which all tools are great. If you can add them to your toolbox, fantastic. Um, I personally like this particular one because it's very applicable. Um, I can read it and know exactly what I could do with it. Whereas some reports that I've taken and some assessments I've taken in the past, there are a lot of um, 
paragraphs, a lot of write up, and I just, it, it confuses me as to what I can do next. It's like, okay, that was a great, you know, event in my life. I'm glad I did it, but what do I do with it? I'm definitely the type of person who wants to apply whatever I spend my time on. And if I can't apply it, then I'd rather just not do it because I, I, my time is valuable. All of your time is valuable and you have to be very selective on what you do with it because it's so short. And, and as you all know, we're sort of balancing this virtual world right now and you got family and you got your, your, your human babies, you got your fur babies, you got your, <laughs> your, if you're, if you're transitioning and you're looking for work or you're wanting to do something else, it's a lot of pressure. And so making it easy is making it, making life easy is what I would rather do than make it hard. So taking a tool, you know, taking assessments or tools and having a very easy applicable way uh, is, is the way I'd rather go in my, in, about my day. So I'm going to talk a little bit about DISC and what it is, and then understanding your report to enhance your cover letters and your resume. I'm here to help in your transition. If I can give you some information that can help you enhance your cover letters and your resume to get you noticed just simply by using the, the real true words that express who you are, fantastic. That is why I'm here and I'm so happy to, to be able to deliver this to you. Then I'm going to talk about understanding other profiles to prepare for interviews. So in this virtual world, world, it's a little bit different than if you were to go in person, but you still can actually do some of the things that you uh, would want to do um, in, in that same setting, but just do it virtually. And then we're going to talk about how to determine other people's profile, especially in a virtual world. So what kind of things can you ask to determine their, their styles and then adjust appropriately? So that way the communication, the line of communication is open and it's more accepting. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, so I know I only have about 30 more minutes, right, Jessica? <laughs> yep. <laughs> you have about 45. Okay. All right. Fantastic. More time, the better. Cause there's so much information in here. I, um, I was like a little nervous on how much I can squeeze into a, you know, a 45 minute slot. Right. So I want to go ahead and get started with what is DISC? So DISC is a behavioral profile assessment that is focused on giving you information on several things about yourself. So what is it that you're going to learn? One is what is your, who are you? Discover your true self. That is the first piece of what DISC is. And, you know, I kind of like to do a little play on words. So we got discover with the D-I-S-C. Uh, but it, you, you get to see yourself in a way that you never thought you would see before. And it's, again, it's one of these things where you, you always knew it, but you didn't quite it didn't quite resonate or you didn't necessarily believe it. So some of you, I will tell you, some of you are going to read your reports and you're going to be like, that's not me. And I'm going to recommend that you actually have someone else read it because I put money on it that it is you and you're just going through a little denial because <laughs> sometimes we don't necessarily want to admit who we really are to even ourselves. And when it's put on paper, it's like, Oh wait, is that true? And I remember the very first time, Jessica, I don't know if you, if you experienced this the first time you took it, but the first time I took this, this exact assessment now is a couple iterations ago and it looked a little bit different, but the very first sentence irritated me. I was it said, Marlene is forceful and demanding. And I'm like, oh, what? No, I'm not. And I'm like, wait, Actually, I am. <laughs> so I may do it with a smile on my face, but I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna get what I want, right? And and but it but it's it immediately like set me off to say, oh, I'm not gonna believe this. But by the time I read the rest of the report, it was like this is totally me. Now there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of fudge, I'd say, or a little bit of a percentage that's gonna be off because it will be depend on the mood you're in when you take it, or if you're conflicted of um, priorities, like right now we're balancing work and home at the same time. And so if you aren't in the right mindset to say, this is how I am work mode, then it might be a little bit off. However, um, for the most part, it's gonna be your true self. So the next thing that the disc does, it allows us to identify other profiles. So you get to see and identify other people. So you're understanding yourself and then you get to see how other people are. And that is really the key to making 
disc successful and part of your life every day. I can meet some, I can look at somebody and get a general idea of what their profile is based on the shoes they wear, the type of clothes they wear, the car they drive, um, and how they present themselves. Um, ask a little deeper questions and within five to 10 minutes, you can actually pretty much nail their, their, their profile. So the next thing that DISC does is it allows you to speak other languages. So once you can identify what those other profiles are, then when you see it, you can speak to their language. So what that means is there's a page in the report that I'll cover where it actually gives you tips on if someone is like this style, which is either the same or opposite of you, then you'll be able to communicate with them more effectively. So you get to speak other languages. So then the last part is, and I, I was having fun with my animation, so I hope you don't mind, <laughs> um, is creating strong relationships. So, you know, got the big heart there because whether it's a work relationship or a personal relationship, this type of, um, I'd say, a deliberate, intentional, purpose-driven way of understanding other people is going to create stronger trusting relationships that you never actually thought you'd have before. People are going to say there's something about Jessica that just makes me feel so comfortable with her and I can communicate with her really effectively effectively, or, you know, Marlene for that matter. And it's because when you can actually communicate the way someone needs to hear it without having walls brought up, then it opens the door for relationship building at like an exponential level. So with that, we're going to go ahead and move on a little bit more into what is DISC itself. So you have D, which stands for dominance, and it's how you handle problems and challenges. Then you have your I, which is influence and how you handle people and contacts. Then you have steadiness, which is your pace and consistency. And it's pretty much around decision making. That's, that's pretty much the root of at what pace do you make decisions and how consistent are you? And then C is compliance. And it's how you handle procedures or constraints. So are you a rule follower, right? So every single person has these four styles within them. Okay, and it's a matter of your intensity as to what your particular profile is. So I am, and you can see in the screenshots and you know that I'm that I provided in this uh, presentation, you can actually see my profile. And I am a D, I'm an I D S C. That's my makeup, my profile. So some of you are familiar with Myers Briggs, and you've got your you know whole alphabet there of the ENTJs and the EFTNs, and you know you have all of those. Well, we have that here. It's for a long, I, I shift between being a complete disc, a DISC, or I ha, I'm an IDSC. No matter what, my C is last <laughs> because I am, I do not, I think rules are meant to, you know, be broken or got, you know, they're guidelines really. So I'm always going to have that low C. And <laughs> so my procedures is, you know what, if I could skip uh, skip uh, number five to get to number seven a little faster, I'll do that. So efficiency is really important. So I, I skip around a little bit. So my C will always be last, and I'm okay with that. I embrace it. <laughs> so again, if you didn't have a chance to do the assessment, I just took a screenshot of where you can get it on the site. This is complimentary through Connectors, which is absolutely a blessing, and um, it's a relationship that Jessica built uh, with one of the uh, the dis distributors with uh, uh, TT, the TTI product that this report is actually um, founded off of. And I connected with her and made sure that we were all good and she was really excited uh, to be able to have someone deliver this presentation to the community because um, that's not something that she really focuses on and so she's like oh great I'm so glad yes absolutely go for it so I'm, I was really excited to connect with her and if you haven't taken it it takes less than 15 minutes it's super easy it's a, you know it's sort of a drop and drag sort of you know um, uh, sequencing type process and it's super fast, super easy. So nothing incredibly hard or challenging. And you are to complete it in one uninterrupted setting. So if you take a step away, you're going to alter your results. And so one complete, one uninterrupted setting and make sure you have the right mindset when you take it because that will also alter the, the results. So, um, so if you haven't had a chance to do it and I heard we had what, 
70 plus people take it in just the last 24 hours. So that's really amazing. So a lot of you should have that report handy with you right now. And we'll, um, it'll make it a little easier to go through the presentation. So um, I am excited to get to this phase where we're gonna start understanding the report. So if you have your report, bring it out, okay? And some of you may have printed it, great, you can take your notes. If you don't have it printed, you can certainly look at it uh, through your, the, the PDF uh, report online. So let's talk a little bit about this report. Um, as I mentioned, TTI Success on Sites is the actual report itself. Now, um, some of you may, may be familiar with this particular distributor of, the, of this particular desk assessment. They have about 30 different types of reports that they can actually deliver. So what I, I actually took this report on the 30th, just a couple days ago, to make sure that I had the right one that your community has and I could do the right screenshots because I'm like, which one are they doing? Because I've done this probably, I don't know, eight times over the last, you know, 10, 10 years. And so, um, so if your, if your uh, report does not have a screen, a, a front page that looks like this, uh, let us know, but uh, that's the one that you should have the link for. Okay, so what is DISC? DISC is how we behave, and it's descriptive and observable. It is not why we behave, which that's the analytical and the non-observable. We have another report for that. That's about values and um, motivators and driving factors. But DISC is simply observable. So what can people see about you? And again, that's why I mentioned, if you don't think whatever your report is, how accurate it is, give it to someone else to read and they'll tell you how accurate it is. <laughs> because sometimes we, we want to deny what we do. Uh, so... So again, this is the how. So the general characteristics, uh, this, these are the first two pages of the report. And sometimes you have two pages, sometimes you have three. So I didn't put the page numbers on here, but it's typ typically page two and three, or it could be four and five. It depends on how many intro pages you have. So these are general statements that provide a broad understanding of your work style. And it's broken down into three paragraphs. One is major talents, two is how it, you deal with problems or challenges, and then three is your communication style. So as you read this, this is sort of the synopsis of you. This is, this is who is Marlene in three paragraphs. And uh, it was interesting because I took it again, I took it again, and I read it to my, my guy, and he's like, what is, what are you reading? And I'm like, well, this is my, this is my passion. This is my love, my assessments. He's like, okay. He said, I said, so how accurate do you think it was? And he said, well, there was a couple things that I don't agree with. And I said, like 95%, 85%. He says, I'll go with 85%. And I can tell you on an average across the board, it's about 85 to 90% accurate. So there's about 10 to 15% that's going to be a little off. And it could be because of the way that you answered it from the mindset you were in, or maybe you went back and, and, and like changed your order. Or uh, because if you go back and change your order and you're not going off of your gut, then it's going to actually alter the results as well. So it's like, I always tell people when you're doing this, go with your gut, answer it quickly. Don't think about it because if you overthink it, you're going to over-engineer it and then it's not going to be accurate. So if it's 85 to 90 percent, it's perfect. It's yes, there's going to be a little bit off, but and it's not going to be perfect 100 percent, but it's going to be incredibly close. And so take those sentences in these paragraphs that are what you feel is off and really think about what is making them off. It could be one word that's making them off that just like that word didn't resonate with you. But think about it and say, okay, well, what, how can I look at it from a different perspective? Okay. So, um, the, uh, the next page is value to the organization. Now, this to me is one of the absolute most important pages for you to understand when you're building your resume. So the, th this identifies the specific talents and behaviors that are brought to the job. This is how one can, how they can identify your role in the organization. And it is going to give like, bullet points. So everybody wants their cover, the cover letters to be crisp and clean and bulletized or just very short. They want your resume to be one page. I, Jessica, is it, is it okay to have two pages anymore? I know it was okay for a while, but now it's back to one page. Is it back to two pages? So keeping it crisp, keeping it clean is incredibly important because 
if, if you, the employer's looking at a hundred resumes, which they could be doing, or even more, what is going to shine? And you want to shine with what is the most accurate about you and the value to the organization is going to be the most accurate. So we want you to be able to share who you are. So between your, between your general characteristics page, pages and those paragraphs and this page, you're going to be able to put together a really nice picture of who you are. So it's super important. And this is again, highlight, mark, flag it, turn the corner or, you know, put a bookmark on, on the uh, PDF of it. You want to go back to this one and make sure that you're integrating this, these particular bullets into your resume and cover letters. The next page is the ideal environment. So Jessica mentioned in the intro that um, this can help you identify what sort of roles you'd like. Um, this is the page to do that. Now we actually have other assessments where you can actually look at what, you know, what, what roles are best suited for you from a, a report perspective and how you answer. However, from a, just a high level general idea, if you look at the, the ideal environment, which is identifies the ideal work environment for your primary behavior style, this is going to automatically put you into a position that you're going to be suited for. So there's so many people who take jobs just because they need a job, but they're there for even one day and they could say, oh, this was a mistake. This is not what I wanted. This is not going to make me happy. Or they're, you know, in a honeymoon phase and they're there for a month or three months. And then all of a sudden it shifts from, you know, you understanding the new role to what it really is. And now that you're in the groove and you're just like, this really doesn't satisfy me. It's not challenging me the way that I need to be challenged or it's not the right work environment for you. So this is incredibly important to pay attention to. Go into your job search looking for the right job first, and then you don't have to do it again later. <laughs> so that way it's a perfect, it's a perfect match from the get. So this is, um, you know, uh, people with limited flexibility will find themselves uncomfortable. So there's, I, I, because I only had a very short period of time, I couldn't put all the pages and I can't debrief everything, but I can look at your results and I could say, this isn't the right fit for you by just looking at one single page and understanding that this is not the right, you're not suited for this particular role because of X, Y, and Z reasons. So pay attention to this page when you're doing your searching. It's incredibly important because your time is valuable and your, you know, your livelihood and your family is relying on you and you want to find something that you're happy with and you're satisfied in and you get joy from every day. And if you're not stretching to do something that you're not really suited for, then you're going to be unhappy and unsatisfied in that role. So start out the gate with the right approach to the job search, which is what works for you and not just what are you willing to do. And then sp specific duties and responsibilities that are enjoyed and but also that can create frustration. So understand that there are, there's limitations to everything. There's, you know, and you may have to compromise on a couple of things. Maybe, maybe your five bullet, you got, you know, seven bullets there, maybe five are perfect and two don't quite match. And maybe that's good enough. You know, maybe you'll be, you'll find that satisfaction and maybe you could change the role to kind of fit you or change the environment more to fit what your needs are, but definitely use this. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look at the questions to see if there's, if I'm missing anything. So I'm going to take a pause right here and I'm going to go, I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to um, scroll a little bit to see if there's anything on those last few pages. Um, I'm kind of moderate, moderating and answering also as people, okay. but one of them that I didn't have the answer to is um, they were asking more about, um, you know, behaviors is the how you behave. Mm -hmm. um, values is the kind of why you do that. Yeah. We do you have access to a values report? We do not. Yes, I do. So if you guys want to um, uh, get a hold of the values report, just let me know. I put my LinkedIn, but also um, my phone number, my email address is also in the chat, and it's at the end of this presentation, and I'd oh. be more than happy. The, the thing about values um, is it's very intimate. Okay, this is, the, this is like your inner core, and so I tend to... I could do like an open presentation like this on the values, but when it comes to debriefing them, I tend to do that on a more personal level because that really is, you're exposing yourself to, to 
things that that you may not want everybody to see. I mean, the observable, yeah, everybody sees that. No big deal. But the values and the motivators and the driving forces are so much more intimate that I'd rather do that on a personal basis. But I can do a, an overview presentation like this, but definitely from a debrief perspective. Okay. okay. And, and, um, if as long as you can provide the link, because um, I know some people want to dive in a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. The other big question, and I think you're going to answer it later, but is adapted versus natural. So I'll, 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 I'll speak to that right now um, because I don't go into it incredibly in depth, um, but adapted versus natural. So natural is what is, so if you put your blinders on and nobody influences you in your decision-making process or how you would behave, that is your natural. Like how were you raised and influenced and what is your gut? What is your gut telling you to do? How, how do you feel that you would, you would handle something that is your natural, your adapted changes with whatever your situation is. So for instance, um, you could adapt in your work environment. You can adapt driving in your car. You could be the nicest person in the world and have a massive road rage and nobody would ever know. Right? So you adapt to whatever your environment is because of other people, because of other circumstances that you have literally no control over. So when you're, in your natural state and your adapted state, the ideal situation is to be as close to your natural as possible. It's because everybody adapts. You adapt at home, you adapt at work, you adapt in your car, you adapt in the grocery store. And as close as you are to your natural style, the healthier you will be, um, your natural is pretty much set in stone and they actually recommend not taking assessments until you're about 21 years old because of just life changes and you're not really kind of set in your ways yet and you haven't quite figured yourself out um, we do have youth assessments as well so if you have kids that are trying to figure out what they want to do when they grow up you know we actually do have um, reports and we also have um, you know families can do it together to try and maybe they're dealing with some family issues and gosh everybody's I think everybody's dealing with family issues now that we've been quarantined and stuck together for four months right it's like um, so, so, um, I actually also used to work with a marriage therapist and a family counselor where we use the assessments in their, um, in their sessions, because it, again, eliminated the, um, the, the emotional factor of the results, right? It's not, there's no emotion attached to this stuff. So it's like, you're able to see it just with a clean, clean lens. So the, so the natural and the adapted is what you're adapting to in whatever mindset and work environment or home environment that you took the assessment in. And it, because you're in transition, it might be a little off because you, you're not sure what it is. However, it's, it's still looking at how did you answer these questions and how did you answer these questions and where do they conflict? So it's kind of like, opposites right so it's the if you answered it one way here and then you answered it another way here they do like this reverse psychology to figure out what your natural and your adapted is it's all the mechanics behind it i can't explain it it's way more engineering minded than i would like to know, understand but there is some reverse psychology behind it because the way they answer the questions and you might have you might have actually said to yourself didn't i just answer this well, yes, you did. And you and they want you to answer it differently to see if it's a consistent answer or not. And then they can actually find that natural and adapted. So it's all that engineering stuff. So does I hope that helps. If it doesn't, then we can um, move on. I yeah, can try and answer it later. Continue on and I'll keep responding as we're going through because I know you have a lot to cover. Okay, perfect. Thank you for doing that, Jessica. I appreciate it. Okay, so keys to motivating. So this is also very important when you're in your job search and in the interviewing skills uh, or uh, the interviewing portion of your search. You have to know what motivates you. So what is it that people are motivated by things that they want? The want is satisfied, there's no longer motivator. So you need to be motivated to perform at an optimal level. So if you are working with a working in an organization that let's just say hypothetically they are the people that put the you know thermometer on the wall and they they're really driven by seeing that thermometer raise on the wall but you could care less that is not motivating you you need to figure out what does motivate you and this page will help you and everybody's different in how they're motivated so you have a true understanding of how are you going to be motivated through either the organization their culture their your, your colleagues the work the actual work you you do you, you perform and make sure that that is driving your engagement, that that is keeping you motivated every single day. So look for 
environments that are going to support your motivation because otherwise you're going to get demotivated and you're not going to be working at the, the most optimal level. So then we have the keys to managing. So this is super important. When you're doing an interview with your potential new manager, keys to managing is going to allow you to understand. So we talked about the wants, which is the motivator, but this is what you need. In order for you to absolutely perform, you need certain things, not want certain things, but need certain things. And your manager and potential manager needs to understand this. Now, if they, don't, if they can't fulfill it, you can fulfill it yourself. So you can manage yourself. Not all of us are great at self-management, but some people are incredibly great at it and they are super self-disciplined. And so they can actually manage themselves in this arena, not have a, not rely on a manager to do that. But your manager needs to understand how to manage you effectively in order to have a good relationship with your manager. Um, so use this in, in creating, so when you do get hired, because you will, because you're all amazing and you just got to find the right, uh, the right place to, that's going to snatch you up, make sure that you use this page on your development plans because this is going to allow you and your manager to work together on in, in, in ensuring that you are working at your optimal level. All right, so none of us are perfect. So I know we all think we are, but we're not. <laughs> So areas of improvement is really important to look at. So when you're reading this page, say to yourself, is this hindering my ability to be in a particular role or position? Is there limitations that I need to know? And is it going to hinder my performance? Is it going to, you know, and then what do I have to do to eliminate this hindrance? So it's important to look at this page with a very open view to say, I'm not perfect, what can I do to be better, and especially better for this particular job that I'm trying to secure. So it's, and you know, sometimes it's hard to, it's hard to read what we're not good at, but be open-minded about it. Take the positive that now you have information that maybe you never had before to help you improve. I remember getting a, I remember getting a, a, a review once that was literally, it literally had all this stuff in there. And I'm like, I didn't even know I was bad at all this. Why has no one told me? So this is at least a pre, uh, a pre-warning of something that might come out later that you had no idea. Um, I did, it actually did say, uh, my review said that I don't like doing things that I don't find important. Really? I think that's pretty much everybody, but apparently I was even more apparent that I didn't like doing it because I didn't think it was important. So, um, and then actually an area for improvement on one of my reports actually did come out with something very similar to that. So it was obviously years later, but um, then I was like, oh, that's where that was. I should have known that. I should have, you know, had this report a couple years ago. So I have just a few more minutes. I'm going to kind of breeze through this and I wish I had more time, but I don't, and I'm not going to, you know, run over. So I'm going to just breeze through these. So understanding other profiles to prepare for interviews. This is, I'm going to quickly go through this. So if there is a D, so understanding a D, they're driven, they're ambitious, they're self-willed. Eyes are, it's about influence and how you deal with people. They're enthusiastic, warm, they're persuasive. Um, steadiness is People with high S's are very loyal. They're relaxed. They're patient. They are completely opposite of me. So <laughs> just saying. <laughs> and then there's the compliance. Um, see, see folks, those are deep, very detail oriented. They're very conventional. They're very exact. There's the literal people. Those are the ones who are going to hold you to whatever the rules are. And then we have our communication tips. So I did that high level just now. This page right here is a brief description of the typical people. I gave just bullets right on this previous slide, but this gives you more detail about that particular style and then suggesting suggestions to improve those communications. So again, I mentioned when you learn about the different styles, you then can adapt to those particular people in the best way to communicate with them. So next slide, you know, next couple of slides, I'm going to actually give you a little test on how to improve or how to, you know, identify people. This is the page you want to come back to when you're getting ready to talk to somebody, say, this is what I think they are. How should I talk to them? And so use it as your cheat sheet, just keep it handy. And then as you're in your interview, especially if it's virtual, you can just keep it right in front of you and you say, okay, from based on these questions, I think this person is a C, this is how I should be answering. So that way they understand what I'm saying better and more effectively. 
So then we have the body language. So again, it's a little more challenging virtually, but uh, you can still see people. And so with your Ds, they're very strong and confident and fast paced, they're loud. Um, they use direct eye contact and they, they use, uh, as you can see, I point, I use my hands a lot. I have a lot of gestures, right? Um, but I'm also, you know, and, you know, I'm definitely looking in at you because I have a high D, but then there's animated and friendly for the eyes and they're casual, they're fairly loud. Um, and then they smile a lot. So the people who smile a lot, those are usually your eyes. Um, S's, they're low in their tone of voice. They're very detailed and methodical. They um, use very small hand gestures. They're very relaxed and they're not emotional. Like my mom, total C, like she is the ice queen. She is not emotional at all. And again, very opposite of me. So uh, you could do this on your family. It's actually quite entertaining to when you actually look at your family. Um, then you have your C's, which are um, very monotone. They're precise. They're deliberate. They are usually the most quiet in their tone of voice and they use very few hand gestures and they they will be uh, very controlled and composed in how they communicate with you. And you know who those people are. Yeah, you already got them in your mind. You're like, yep, that's Johnny or that's Danny. <laughs> um, the way communications with D's are they- Can yeah. I stop you? I have a couple questions that are popping up. I hope it's okay if you stop it. We still have 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, but I wanted, um, we're getting a lot of questions about you know, this assessment, should I share it with my employer? Should I, you know, what components do I let them know the whole thing? Like, what's your personal opinion on that? My personal opinion is, uh, get hired first. Um, and, and, you know, secure it first. And then your very first one or two meetings with your manager or your team should be to share it. There's no reason. I mean, unless there's personal things, you know, you could, re re what do they call it? Redact it where you could line things out or block it, you know, pen it out if you don't want to share that personal, you know, if it's that personal. Um, but absolutely share it. There's no reason why you shouldn't be open, be transparent. It will be refreshing to your manager to actually have you be transparent to them. Then they don't have a lot of guesswork to figure out who you are and how to work with you. It makes it so much easier. And there are some organizations who are actually using the disc profile as a pre-hiring assessment. So they're, and if, and if they're already using it, they already know you and they're going to base hiring off of your assessment results because they can. And so there's a lot of companies who do benchmarking and they actually try to fit exactly to the profile that they benchmark against. So I absolutely recommend it. Plus, here's the thing. If they're not exposed to DISC, you show them this, they're going to be like, hey, this is amazing. I want my whole team to do it. And then you can have everybody sharing who they are. In the intact team sessions that I do, I get a team together and we actually share the two to three bullets on every single page. So that way everyone understands who each other is. That's the only way to build a trusting team is if you understand each other. So it's important to share it. So it's a great question. Thank you for that. And let me just add on to that because there were some questions about can people use this in hiring? And my thought was, I have always heard that they can't use it alone in hiring. They have Correct. To use it as a package. Can I just clarify that? Is that true? Well, I, if they only use it for hiring, that's probably a bad idea. They, there's, there's a, a whole, you know, there's competencies that they're looking for. There's role descriptions that they need to match. The, the DISC assessment or any, or, or any other assessment for that matter, it could be Myers-Briggs, it could be whatever. Any pre-hiring assessment should have a tool. You know, it should be just one of the many things. But they can use it. And if they do a full benchmarking program, then they're actually going to use that more heavily than other organizations who don't. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Okay. So just to be clear, because I keep looking at the time. So, uh, so just to be clear, I have till 10 o'clock. That's right. So you have 15, okay. 15 more minutes. Huh? Yay. I felt like I was uh, one of those auctioneers. <laughs> la, 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 la. So <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go. Um, so in communicating with D's, they're going to launch in a conversation without saying hello. So when I say that, I do it all the time. I write it all the time. So this could be written or it can be in person verbally. So there are so many times I literally will send an email or a text and I'll be like, do you have this done for me? And they'll be like, that's not very nice, Miss D. I say, good morning. Do you have this for me? <laughs> so it's like, I, I, I actually sometimes catch myself and I, I'm like, nope, that's not very nice. If I want to get something from somebody, I need to be nice to them. <laughs> so I can't just be like, Meh. so, um, so, you know, and, and 
I, I, Jessica, how many times at Intel did we have those managers? We called them the flybys. We would get the flybys where they just fly by our desk, drop a couple bombs, and then they leave and be like, I need this, 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 and this. And then they're gone. And you're like, who, who was that? <laughs> I didn't see, <laughs> but they just, they wouldn't even say hello. And it's like, wait a second, I'm a human too. I need to be talked to. So, um, but they're brief, forceful and gone. And so here's another thing that actually best, best uh, takeaway or, or un, most unforgettable moment in an Intel Intel team session that I had where it says, put the entire message in the subject line. I was doing, I was doing a session with about 15 people. And everybody, when people saw that third bullet, they immediately turned and looked at one person in the room who was the manager. <laughs> and they, they were like, you totally do that. You totally do that. And um, she was like, I do that. And so I then had a, another session, maybe like two, three months later with a matrix team for her. And she's like, hey, Marlene, I don't put my entire message in the subject line anymore. I'm like, sweet, that's awesome. So that was my, one of those moments that I will always treasure to say I'm actually doing something good here because everybody in the room hated the fact that she did that. So if I could get her to stop, yay. <laughs> so then we have the, the eyes. So they entertain when they're talking. They hold long conversations. You could tell I'm an eye because I'm like, la, 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 and I want to make sure I get it all in. Um, emails are long and overuse exclamation points. They tend to use emoticons, you know, the emojis, they, ex, you know, use colors and ex exclamation points and smiley faces. And there, you could actually see them smiling in their email. So those are the, typically the eyes. Then you have your S's and the S's are going to actually ask you, how are you? Because they care. Like they actually want to know how you're doing. They're not the D who's just saying that because they have to, they actually want to know. So tell them how your day is going, how you are, because they care about you. They'll, they will project genuine warmth. They're a good listener and they write to stay in touch. So email makes it a lot easier. Texting makes it super easy to stay in touch with people, but the people who actually do it, are the S's. <laughs> They're the ones who actually keep those relationships going. So, um, so when you get a text from that friend, who's like, I, she always checks in with me like every other day or every once a month or every other week, you know what? She's probably an S. Um, then we have our C's, which are very formal. Um, they, they're usually people who prefer form, formal names. So when I, when I say this, I, I, I've worked with a person, I worked with a person who like, nailed this to a T. Her name was Elizabeth. And she says, my name is not Liz. It's not Lizzie. It's not Beth. It's not Bethy. It is Elizabeth. And I'm like, okay, all right, Elizabeth. And ever since I, ever since that moment, and then knowing about this particular style, I actually ask people, so if their name is William, I'll say, do you prefer William or Bill? And they're like, William, okay, you got it. Or, you know, Theodore and not Ted, you know, so it's, it's a respect thing. So when someone actually has a full name like that, ask them what they prefer to be called. They will appreciate that. Um, so their emails are sent to clarify or explain, and they're usually incredibly long and they have supporting documentation to it. It could be a chart, it could be a graph, it could be quotes, it could be whatever, but they usually have something to support whatever they're saying. And I, I have a colleague who literally writes paragraphs in his email and I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, I don't read it. I need bullet points. <laughs> Just, you want me to read it? make it easy for me to read. That's that whole adapting to others. And so I think, I think we're getting him, you know, pared down a little bit, but he's still a novelist. So, <laughs> um, okay. So before I move on to the next sec section, Jessica, are there any other questions for me? So, um, I don't know if you're going into this, but two that have, um, come out the circle, you know, with the, the graph, with a star in the circle, what does that mean? And the other one that's come up is the behavior hierarchy chart. Okay, so those I, I do not have in this presentation because those, it takes a little bit longer. I wanted to just get the basics of DISC for you guys. Um, at a high level, behavioral hierarchy is another way to cut the data and look at it from a statistical perspective and it's where do you fall 
in with that particular area of that of that behavior. The circles, the the wheel chart we call it, and the star in the circle you, is your natural and your adapted. So your natural is the circle, the star is your adapted, and depending on the distance will depend on how far away from you, you how far away you are from your natural style. So I mentioned that if you're far away, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a challenge for you. It's because you're trying to be something you're not in whatever that adapted role is. And so you want to have your adapted as close to that that natural as possible, that's the page that you can really see where there's a problem area. And so I don't go into a lot of detail around that. Um, what I can do as follow-up is I can provide some um, kind of a, a, a PowerPoint or cheat sheet on how to read it and how to understand it. So that way you guys can do that on your own. Um, but I don't have it in this presentation because I was worried about time. That's awesome, Marlene, because one of the questions we always get, and we're getting it again today, is will we have the slides available? We don't normally do the slides. There's too much intellectual property, not just for our speakers, but for our companies. But we have the webinar available, and we are also blog recapping this event. But if you have a cheat sheet, something else we could put up, that we'll put it on our blog, our career advice blog, and that would be available to everyone, if you don't mind. I do not mind. I'm happy awesome. to do that. So there you go, guys. She'll have that cheat sheet available for us. So um, okay, you can move on. Thank you for letting me interrupt you. No problem. No, I want you to interrupt me. I, I don't want to miss anything. And, I, and the, I, I see the, the chat going and I'm like, there's no way I could actually read that and actually do this. So thank you for helping moderate those questions. Okay, so how can you determine other people? So now it's quiz time, all right? We're gonna do a little bit of quiz and this will be fun. So just put your uh, answers in the chat box when I say go, okay? So we're gonna identify styles by sight. So again, this is what can you figure out how people are based on just what you know of them. And you're not gonna know anybody. If you know any of these people, do a shout out because I want to. I want to understand. I want to know how you know some of these people. Okay. So when you look at the circle the, on the the last page of your report, think of it like a like a pie chart. Okay. If you split it down the middle horizontally, these are task focused. Okay. Down below are people focused. And so that when they think of things, they're going to have that focus in their mindset, right? And if you split it uh, vertically, you have the right side, which are faster thinking more um, people tend to call them impulsive uh, <laughs> decision makers to so the left is slower and that is more deliberate decision makers okay so it's the piece that with they, which they make the decision is the right or to the left and if they're task focused or people focused now there's a caveat I'm just gonna say that some people can turn people into a task so you might get a little confused on what you think somebody is because they're very people oriented but pay attention to how tasks how people focus they are because they actually could be turning a person into a task and we do there is there there are a lot of people who do that so just be careful because you may miss misread somebody by simply thinking that they're people focused because they're so relationship driven but it could be just simply to turn into a task right so Again, everybody has all four of the styles. And in this uh, particular quiz, all four of these people that I show you are the same style. We're gonna try and determine what that style is, okay? So, identify their most visible style by the correct focus and pace of what you know, okay? Are they task or people, or are they faster or slower? So, here we go, here's the first one. We have Jackie Kennedy Onassis, Clint Eastwood, the Dalai Lama, and Jack Nicholas. So in your chat box, if you think about what is their pace and then what is their focus, so if they're slower paced, what would they be? Okay, so if they're slower paced, they're going to be on this side, right? What is their focus? Are they going to be task or people? Okay, so they're going to be task focused. So we got an S in there. So what do you think they are? What do you think they are? We got an S. Slower paced people, okay? So these people are all your C's. So these are slower paced, task focused people. So they are very methodical, they're very deliberate. If anyone has watched a Clint Eastwood movie, it's three and a half hours long because he's very methodical and very drawn out in what he does. Very precise, very accurate. Jackie O, man, she had that game face on when we, we lost our beloved president, right? You have the Dalai Lama who's very patient and very deliberate and methodical in his thinking. Jack Nicholas, if you've ever seen him play golf, yeah, he's absolutely precise, and they all very—they are all very soft-spoken. They are all very calm 
and very precise people. So these would be your C's. Okay. Um, so when you got your task and you got your slow, it, it, you know, here's the thing is pace. Pace is something that is going to be pretty obvious. That's your introvert, extrovert kind of thing, right? So introverts are going to be more on the slower pace side. Extroverts are going to be on the faster pace. So just kind of, that's a little cheat as well. So next we have Jimmy Fallon, Ta Taylor Swift, Angelina Jolie, and Kurt Warner. Okay, so I want you to think about it. What is their pace? What is their focus? And start putting putting in the um, put in the chat box. What do you think they are? We already said there's a, we already got rid of the C. So are they D's, S's, or I's? You think they're I's? I see some D's coming in. I see some more I's. Okay, so what is their pace? A faster pace. So yes, they're either going to be a D or an I because that's the faster pace. And the focus is is drum roll people so they are your eyes so very good you guys on guessing the eyes and again if anyone knows any of these people put it in the chat because i want to know how you know them <laughs> all right next we have brad pitt scarlett johansson carrie underwood and aaron Rodgers. and for those of you who don't know who aaron Rodgers is uh, he's the quarterback for Green Bay Packers, okay? Because <laughs> I actually was, I was asked that question, who's Aaron Rodgers? If you're not into football, there you go. Um, all right, so what is their, what is their pace? Okay, so we got, we got an S, we got a D in there. Okay, we got go pack. Yes, excellent. I love Aaron Rodgers, by the way. Um, they are slower pace, so they're going to be a C or an S. So what are they? What is their focus? Is their focus people or task? Let's see what it says, people. So they are our S's. So very good for those of you who guessed S. So again, we do not know these people personally. It's just what we observe from them through interviews, through the way they behave, through the way they work. What sort of roles do they take? What sort of songs do they sing? How do they perform on, on stage? All of that, right? Okay, so here we have Gordon Ramsay, Steve Jobs, Madonna and LeBron James. So. I would hope that this would be incredibly obvious, uh, but they, because they usually stand out, so their pace is faster pace, yes, yes. <laughs> so they're gonna be a D or an I. And then their focus is a people or task. It's people or task. Well, they are task focused. So these are our Ds. Now I'm gonna tell you, being a high D myself, um, it usually takes three non-Ds to combat one D. Just saying, the Ds are so dominant, especially depending on how high their intensity is. Like Gordon Ramsay, you need probably 10 non-Ds to get him calmed down, right? And be able to combat him. So, so again, this is, we don't know any of these people, but it's just what we see. So people can actually say this about you. So they could say, hey, what is Jessica Pierce like? I could say, well, you know what? She is, um, you know, I think pretty fast paced. I think she makes decisions pretty quickly. However, she's incredibly people focused. So I would say, I would guess her as an S. However, where it gets to be a little on the, uh, the side of, hmm, I need to ask some more questions. Jessica's incredibly driven. She's very, very task focused in how she accomplishes her, her goals, right? So it could be that people is her task. Never know. She created a business out of people, helping people. So that could be. So that's, I'm just giving an example. Jessica might be a D. She might be an S. She's definitely, definitely on a faster pace side, you know, and, and the decision making can range from zero to a hundred. And so decision, so it might be somewhere in the middle. So now for me, I make very fast decisions. However, I can make them in a split second because I've put like five things together to make the decision. People don't think I actually think about it, but I do. So I hope that was fun. And believe it or not, I'm on my last slide. So, <laughs> um, so use this information to enhance your cover letters, your resumes, and use those report results to show how valuable you are. I know I went through this incredibly fast and there's, you guys can reach out to me at any time and I'm happy to come back and, and do more um, in depth if, if Jessica and, and Sheila would like me to. Um, but use this. Prepare for your interviews. Learn how to communicate with others. Understand. And it's just at the highest level. Understand the profiles of uh, what the other styles are. So that way 
when you are on a Zoom call, you could say, okay, how is their hair? How are they dressed? You know, what colors are they wearing? Um, what kind of questions, kind of relationship kind of questions can I ask to get them to give me answers so I know what style they are? And what I will also do, Jessica, is provide you a list of, of questions you can ask um, to help identify that identify what the styles are. Um, but, but just in general conversation, pay attention. Are they faster paced decision makers or are they slower? What is their, what is their focus, right? So determine your interviewer's profile and adapt to their communication style. You want to nail the interview, right? If you want to nail the interview, you got to talk their language, pay attention quickly. And as you get to ask questions too, you know, you get to absolutely ask as many questions as you want. A lot of people don't really feel comfortable asking questions ask them, ask them and ask them early. So that way you can tailor your answers in the way that that interviewer needs to hear it because that's the way you're going to nail the interview. They're going to be like, man, Beth was amazing. I, I just, she, she nailed every answer. I asked every question I asked, she nailed it. And it, it just came across so fluently and articulated in a way that I understood it. I didn't, I didn't scratch my head after the interview. That is the way that you can do that through this assessment and through these tools. So with that, um, if you want more from me, because 45 minutes is really, this is like drinking from a fire hose. Um, I'm offering 15% off of all my products and offerings to all of her connectors. I'm, I'm happy to come back and do a little bit more. I'm even happy to do intact team sessions. If you want to do something for her connectors specifically, happy to do a breakout session, whatever. I want to help you. Um, Jessica, you know, I, I, uh, it was what, six years ago when I moved here back from Oregon and, and I came in and I, I saw what you were doing. I'm like, this is so great. And I want to be able to help you guys as much as Jessica, you know, has, has facilitated this great community for you. I want to help in that. I want to help you be able to find that career, your dreams and be as successful as you know, you possibly can, you know, or actually limitless. I just want you to be successful and with no, no holds barred. So I'm available here for you. Is there any questions in the chat that um, Jessica, you feel I should answer before I go? Otherwise I'm only two minutes over. Okay. No, this is so good. It was such a great presentation in this virtual environment because we were able to engage a lot with um, the chat while you were talking. Uh, Sheila, if you can go back one slide so people can see her phone number again. We're getting that question in the chat. Um, Marlene, but let's talk offline. Um, I would love for people to be able to maybe take one more step and do take the assessment from you and maybe we can do um, maybe not in this main session, but anyone who goes to the next level, we can provide a, another way to do a conversation again, another hour or something that can help people. So we'll get back to all of you on that. Marlene and I will touch base, but I wanted to say one thing, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of questions about is, do, and I was getting personal questions and you will probably get some private questions as well, Marlene. So you want to check that. But, um, people saying, hey, does a job have to have a certain style? And, you know, all of us can learn how to do a job. But one thing to think about is there, people are definitely gifted differently and behave differently and are better matches for some job. And I always love the example of a doctor. And so if you walk into an ER, in ER and you're getting ready to have a baby and you need a doctor to help you right now, you want a doctor who's probably more of the D style, <laughs> right. not going to wait and think about what the right thing is to do. They're going to react where if you're having brain surgery, you likely want to have a doctor that has a high C that doesn't care if it takes eight hours, they're going to get it right. <laughs> so. Yeah. And, and for that matter, like a pediatrician, you know, you want your kids to be heard and, and, and cared for. So you would want that. You would want to see for a pediatrician. And, and it's similar to with, with, uh, you know, you know, like education. So university professors, they're, they're the D's, right? They're just get in, get out, they're done. Um, but a kindergarten teacher, you don't want a D for a kindergarten teacher. You want actually an I because that has to engage a kindergartner I and mean, it has to be entertaining and engaging and, and bring out the emotions in, in children because they're kindergartners, right? Um, so it's, it, when you look at the different type, it, you, you can't categorize it in one. You have to be able to look at it from a much broader perspective. So yes, everyone can do anything, right? Anybody can do anything, but do you really want to do something you're not really gifted for? Do you really want to spend the time learning something that 
you actually have no passion for, you have no energy for, because if you're doing something that you don't like, you have zero energy for it. You're going to give the bare minimum and you're not going to excel at it. And that's not going to give you the props that you deserve and to keep you motivated. Remember the motivation? That's what you need to focus on. The ideal environment and the motivation is what's going to keep that going. So awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. I remember taking my first college course and it was an accounting course. I got about two weeks into it and I thought I was going to fall over and die if I had to do another <laughs> debit and credit. So I knew we're good at what are your strengths? Focus on those. Awesome. Marlene, it was awesome. Thank you so much. Marlene has to run to another meeting, but she's going to jack and check the chat in and out of our, um, the last half hour we have here. But if everyone could do a virtual clap. <laughs> <laughs> we really well, appreciate thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thank you. And thank you so much, everybody. And again, I'm available at any time. Take care. Have a great rest of your meeting. Thank you. All right. We are bringing the ladies over from Equality Health now. And so Amy Bennett is here. She is the Director of People and Culture, and she's a seasoned HR professional, has more than 20 years experience, mostly in healthcare and pharmaceutical industries. She's originally from Southern Cal and began her career as a recruiter for Kelly Services and quickly found she was working with people, educating, coaching, communicating, a perfect fit for HR. Her most positive experiences have been in startup rapid organizations such as Care West, Miss Pharmaceutical, and now Equality Health, where she has the opportunity to create and shape employee-centric culture. And she is fond of saying, we think we hire employees and people and with her today is Marcy. And um, so what do you do in molecular biology? She says, you work in HR. <laughs> Marcy's background is in working in isolated labs with sheep people. Marcy did a position for a new office four years ago and became the HR coordinator. And it was exactly what she was looking for in her life, people. Oh, I bet you an interesting disc. Um, his career in HR has continued since then with the completion of her master's certification in HR management. And she is currently a generalist of people and culture for Equality Health. Um, is to re represent Equality Health's mission and create a strong team with a diverse culture. So will you please help me, um, Amy and Marcy, today. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there was a message on there that, uh, Jessica, that your audio was going in and out. So please let me know if my audio goes in and out so that I can be well heard. Uh, so great, great to be here. Uh, I have a connection with Career Connectors from many years ago when I was unemployed and found this resource to be of great value to me in my transition and finding a new role. So I'm really glad to be here now as an employed person and representing Equality Health. Um, Equality Health is a, is a young organization. Um, a startup, I think we're a little bit out of startup mode right now, probably more in growth mode. We've been around for about four and a half years and uh, we exist. I, I, the fancy name for our organization is that we're an integrated healthcare delivery system. Um, but we exist because we believe that the healthcare system in the United States is a little bit broken, fragmented, and our mission and our focus is, fo is on the underserved and Hispanic uh, or excuse me, the minority populations here in Arizona. I mentioned Hispanic because that's the largest minority here in Arizona. And there's a number of arms to our business. We have a technology division that operates under the name of Health BI. And we have created a software platform that uh, integrates healthcare data between payers patients and providers. And I'm simplifying that to a great deal because it is a very powerful software system. There is, um, so that's one side of our business. The second side is, all, is our Equality Health Network, which is a network of about 4,000 physicians here in Arizona who want to be part of a, uh, a network, not part of a uh, uh, a medical group to take advantage of one, our, uh, our software to take advantage of what's called a value-based contracts with insurance payers so that if we are improving healthcare outcomes and we're taking a look at um, social determinants of health, which means 
all of those things that affect healthcare, but do not, uh, but are not exactly health or medical related. So transportation, financial insecurities, um, housing insecurities, access to healthcare, using all of those things to improve healthcare outcomes, the value-based contracts that these uh, physicians have by being a part of our network, they're reimbursed at a higher rate because again, we're improving to, uh, total healthcare outcomes. So that's our network. And then we also have uh, healthcare delivery. So we have two freestanding clinics here in Arizona, and these are considered uh, complex care centers because there are three service lines in each clinic, and that is um, behavioral health, pain management, and primary care. And if you've been in healthcare at all for any uh, length of time, you may recognize that that is the trifecta, if you will, of uh, healthcare provider or, or of service. Because if you're if someone is dealing with chronic pain or um, substance abuse, boy, nine times out of ten, they are going to be screening positive for depression, and also then dealing with a uh, a physical medicine issue, uh, hypertension, diabetes, those are the two big ones. And so being able to provide that access underneath one roof is really, really important. And again, uh, that, that's part of our, our integrated care model. So um, being a startup or, or high growth organization um, from a, someone who's going to fit well within uh, a position, whether it's in the corporate office or on the clinical side of our business, is going to be um, someone who is very resourceful, um, who has ideas, who's able to wear very many hats uh, and, and enjoy being able to kind of put their footprint on a number of different, uh, on a number of different areas. So that's, that's really a little bit about who Equality Health is. I'm glad to be part of this organization and to represent that. And I know that we have a, a number of extraordinary opportunities Right now, on the clinical side of our business, we are looking for a licensed clinical uh, social worker and also a, 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 an RN who is experienced with transition care or care coordination. So um, I'm looking at the slides right now. And this is a little bit of what I, I spoke to. We believe in social justice. And that's... I just didn't know where you want to stop, Amy. No, that's okay. I'm looking at, I'm kind of ad-libbing and not looking at the slides, but um, so Marcy, how about this? I'll turn it over to you now and have you talk a little bit about the opportunities that we have existing. Okay, great. Well, thank you all again for having us back. And we really appreciate the, you know, the time and the interest in our company as well. And so we have a few, a uh, few positions open and just for everyone's information, uh, we haven't furloughed anyone or laid anybody off during this COVID time. So we are on a growth mode as Amy mentioned earlier. And so that's something, you know, that's important to us as well. All of our employees are working from home right now, but um, when the COVID subsides, we are gonna be moving back to an in-office position. So um, when we hire, we can do remote hiring and we can do uh, orientation remotely if necessary, but we, we do all these positions will end up being in office position. So first we have the behavioral health therapist that um, Amy spoke about and we have a care management RN. Those are part of our clinical departments and we're also going to have a medical assistant position coming open and we're also going to have a credentialing specialist coming open as well this week, which those aren't listed on there right now, but we have a medical director for QPoint. We have a provider network development manager specific to Tucson. And this person needs to have medical contacts in Tucson and re relationships with providers in Tucson. Uh, we need a practice performance manager in Houston as we are branching out and moving into the market in Texas. And we need a quality improvement specialist here in the office. And that is someone that's concentrated on HEDIS and those requirements. And someone that's also really proficient in Excel, that's one of the, the main things that this person's gonna be working with. So we have a senior accounting analyst that's um, open as well in our finance department. And we have a vice president position open for a platform as a service. And so this person's gonna be handling the managed care contracts and he's gonna be the, or he or she, is gonna be the liaison between the payers and Equality Health since we work with um, you know, using our platform as a service. And so those should be, those are the positions open right now. They are all listed on our website. 
and you can go to apply to them anytime or you can contact myself or Amy if you have any questions. Oh, we have some really great benefits as well that are also listed on our career site as well as here. We have great medical, pharmacy, dental, and vision. We have HSAs or FSA accounts, life insurance, voluntary life insurance, long-term and short-term disability, 401ks with a 5% match. We have 15 days PTO in your first year. So that's really a nice option. You know, we really, we really stress to people that we want them to take their vacation time, you know, and be in this work-life balance that we pr promote. Uh, we also get paid for eight hours of volunteer time and we can volunteer anywhere, you know, that we want to in the Valley or at schools or, or um, community functions, whatever you decide you want to spend that time on. We have an employee assistance program, which is very important right now during this COVID time as it provides, you know, free financial information, counseling to our individuals and their families. So that's something that's really nice to take advantage of as well. We have eight paid holidays and we also have an employee referral program that we pay our employees for if somebody gets hired from their referral. So we have some really great benefits. A couple of other um, notes on that. I know that the listing of our job opportunities, some of those position titles are easy to understand, such as a senior accounting analyst, but some of them, a practice performance manager, what's that? Do take a look at the job descriptions. I think that, that will be, um, a great help to you in understanding the roles that we are looking for um, and uh, also through the rest of our website to understand a little bit more about the culture that this organization has and the impact that we're making in the community. I think that that's really important for someone to understand and to really uh, be a part of um, have it within themselves to be a part of, of the culture of equality health. So. Thank you, Marcy. Definitely, definitely. So this, this slide has our website on it. And our website, again, explains we have a lot of different hands in, in a lot of different buckets. And so it's uh, to get an understanding of what we do and what our mission is, because we are very mission driven as a company. And, you know, we want, so, we want people to come to work for Equality Health and they, they need to fit into the culture and also believe in our mission. So that's the most important thing as well. So thank you again for having Amy and myself. We really appreciate the time and we are here for, you know, any questions and reach out to us at any time. Great ladies. Thank you so much. And um, they will both be around and available to answer questions. So if you have anything for them, feel free to drop it in the chat or send the private message over to them and um, they will be available. So thank you so much, ladies. We appreciate thank you. All right, so Cindy Peterson Hash, welcome. We are so glad you're here. She's been recruiting in the Phoenix area for more than 20 years, and she is currently Director of Talent Acquisition at Early Warning in Scottsdale, and she was previously the Recruiting Manager for the Americas region at Avnet, and I think that is where we met, Cindy. Um, That's when, true. Okay, when she's not working on talent acquisition, she volunteers her time taking photos of homeless pets for adoption. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for being here today, Cindy. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Jessica. It, it's true. Um, I had a chance um, a few years ago to represent Avnet um, at Career Co Connectors a couple times and was really excited, actually, to have a chance to come and talk about um, early warning. Um, I have been recruiting in Phoenix for a long time, but um, even myself, um, wasn't very familiar um, with early warning. And so being able to come and talk about who we are um, and some of the opportunities that we have in Arizona um, is really why I'm here today. We do actually have um, facilities in Chicago and San Francisco, but in, in general, um, some of the positions that I'm talking about um, are the Arizona-based positions, and you can find those also on our website. Um, oh, and I see a question about um, working from home. So um, all early morning employees um, across the company um, started working from home in March. I'm working from home <laughs> right now. Um, this is my um, home office set up. I do have the door closed because I have dogs. Um, and we will uh, work from home as a company through the remainder of the year. 
So we have um, made that decision um, that helps our employees plan um, the remainder of their year. Um, so, um, and then we'll, we'll plan our return um, to the buildings. And um, so early warning is a FinTech um, owned actually by seven of the country's largest banks like Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase, um, the company itself is almost 30 years old. Um, we are um, headquartered in Scottsdale, um, really um, actually um, at the 101 and Bell Road. So right at the top of Scottsdale um, is our headquarter building. We have a location also in Tempe, which is our contact center. Um, across the US, we have about a thousand employees and um, predominantly over the years, the company has focused on um, authentication and identity and payment solutions um, for financial institutions. So this helps um, those um, financial institutions like banks make sure that someone who is opening a checking account is actually the person um, that they say they are and um, you know are eligible to open that account. Um, so our products um, mitigate fraud and um, risk in the financial um, transactions. We actually um, also though are best known for Zelle. So um, Zelle, um, hopefully there are a lot of Zelle users on the call, um, but Zelle is um, a payment um, transfer network um, and our consumer, um, a, a big part of our consumer brand. Even when you go um, to the headquarter building um, in Scottsdale, um, it says Zelle on the building. And so, um, Zell Network is um, continuing to grow. And that's really kind of um, who we are in a nutshell, but really trying to um, make digital payments easier and faster um, for people and um, reducing um, fraud and risk in um, the financial uh, networks. So we hire um, for quite a few different types of positions and um, several technical positions, as you can imagine, like systems engineer and DevOps engineer, application security is um, really important to us. Um, cyber threat security, um, risk management, is um, critical. We're, we're regularly hiring for these types of roles because we're building um, technical systems and products. And um, a lot of that is um, coupled with um, reducing fraud and um, you know, managing risk in the, in the technical system. Um, also customer success, of course. And then um, business process optimization is a newer role for us. Um, we have corporate headquarters here, so some of the um, corporate types of positions um, that we have that you might expect um, are financial analysts, one in particular right now dedicated to supporting our IT organization, and then also finance director and director of our um, enterprise project management office as well. So. Um, Lots of um, security related types of roles, technical development roles, um, business roles like risk management and um, corporate um, types of positions as well. And I actually um, didn't do a benefit slide and, and so I'm gonna piggyback off of um, the equality slide um, and the ladies who went before me because now I'm thinking, oh gosh, um, you can find benefits information on our website, um, and we do have um, medical plans, um, tuition reimbursement. We also have pet insurance um, and other um, benefits, I think, that, that you would expect as well. Um, but there are a couple ways to 
connect with us. Um, obviously, we have a career page on our um, company website. Um, you can email all of us at recruiting at earlywarning.com. Um, you can certainly find me and the other recruiters um, on LinkedIn. I would hope um, that I'll get some um, connection invitations um, from the meeting today, but um, simply wanted everyone to um, know about us, know that we're hiring, um, you know, know that we're still growing. Um, we have, um, we slowed down. We paused a little bit, um, but, um, you know, never completely stopped hiring and, and now are picking that up again. So um, thank you for having me. I'll check the chat if there are any personal um, or um, questions directly for me about early warning, but I look forward to connecting with everyone. Great. Thank you, Cindy. Really appreciate you being here today and sharing. I had no idea Zell and early warning work. Right. <laughs> the same. <laughs> so yeah. thanks so much. I use it all the time. Oh, good. Great. Good. All right. Well, I'm going to go through a couple things real quick um, to round out our time. If you do have questions for Cindy, feel free to send them over to her and uh, she will try to respond to you this morning. Okay. So first of all, we are getting ready to launch a um, poll. You're going to see it in front of you. We cannot obviously do handwritten evaluations right now. So we try and take a quick pulse of um, your thoughts about today. So Sheila's going to launch a poll, answer the question, and the poll will go away. So it should be a super quick uh, response uh, for you. Um, and it gives us a lot of feedback. You can also email us directly. And we are happy to answer your questions at Career Connectors at contact at careerconnectors.org. All right, so um, something else, just real quick about the evaluations. If there's another topic that you're interested in um, or a speaker you recommend or a hiring company that you're interested in, we, you can drop that in the chat. Um, you can email us and we would uh, love to have that information. We do a recap after every single event. This slide just shows, uh, shows our wonderful partners and they are all, helping to make this program happen and continue to happen. Uh, even during, we had to go from in-person events to virtual. And so thanks so much to our wonderful partners uh, that are serving and making this happen for our community. Uh, I do wanna ask you guys, if you know of anyone looking for a job, if you have any friends that have been affected by a layoff or are uh, thinking about their next job opportunity, I encourage you to let them know about our events. Uh, in this virtual environment, we can basically serve people all over the world, especially in our hour keynote. And so I encourage as many people as possible to get on the line and listen to the content. We work really, really hard to bring content that matters and is not a waste of time. And that is a little bit unique or different to maybe what else is available. We try and fill in the gaps there. So please um tell your friends thanks carol from virginia we're glad we can be here for you tell your friends we um can serve anywhere right now okay this slide is best companies az uh, worked with us to put together a website this um it has verified companies specific to arizona uh, but verified companies hiring in arizona we put it together during covid and as you know we're not out of that yet so um, even though some things are starting to open up uh, so this is verified companies that we um, found out about worked with and validated their jobs so go check that out bestcompaniesac.com backslash resources uh, and then the next slide here uh, is let's see okay oh okay so you all have taken the disc i mean we've dropped it in the chat a million times but there it is again it is always at no cost this is always available to you at no cost. We are also blogging this event today. So uh, a lot of the data points that were given, which was a ton of information, is going to be on our event recap blog. And then we'll also drop that cheat sheet that Marlene is gonna give us. We'll drop the link into the re event recap blog, but that will probably go out on our career advice blog. I'm not sure exactly where Sheila will put it, but we'll make sure in this blog it's linked directly to it. Then there's a whole bunch of ways you can get us on social media, as you can see at the bottom. Uh, we're very active on LinkedIn, very active on um, Facebook. And so those are the two. The LinkedIn is a group. And so you can engage in that chat as well. 
So uh, feel free to uh, join the Career Connectors LinkedIn group and we would love to have you. All right, so we are moving kind of to a two month, a two times a month event program. And so we have been every week, we've had to um, just due to COVID and some financial things we're working out, we have had to pull back some resources, unfortunately, but that will mean we are having events um, twice a month instead of every week. And they will, at this time, they will still be on Wednesday mornings. The next one, you guys, you have to be there for. This is one of our most attended events when we go live and in person. We're taking the format and we're bringing it to the virtual stage. We, it's called Resume Mythbusters. We have three of the best resume writers in Arizona. They are certified on uh, certification. Uh, they are certified on a national resume writer certification and they know what they're talking about. And so we have been working with them for over 10 years and they um, get researched every year. They do hundreds of resumes and these are the ladies that know what we're talking about and they know how to get you through the applicant tracking system and to get your resume in front of that hiring manager. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to ask questions. Register. Feel free to ask your question. There's space for that. And we're rolling up all those questions and we'll I'll moderate that panel on September 16th. We have about an hour with them, so we're super excited. We also have McKesson, HealthWave, and U-Haul as our hiring companies that day. And then October 7th, we're back with Kevin Dumcom on Kickstart Your Job Search. Kevin is, uh, has been in workforce development for over 10 years, and he has a fantastic presentation on how to get things moving. Right now, we have Windsor as one of our hiring companies, and then Travis Harden is coming back, first time in the virtual environment, how do I effectively lead during a crisis? So he is a leadership management coach and he is phenomenal. Uh, and he is so encouraging, but not only just encouraging and hope filled, but action oriented also. So come uh, October 7th, we've, let, we've landed by then. That is a great one to listen to after that, even after you've landed. All right, so there's three ways we're getting content out to you right now. The first one is a weekly career chat. And if you go to our careerconnectors.org homepage, you can see there's three boxes. The first one is the career chat. And this is updates on unemployment. Uh, there's job search tips, things like that in the career chat. The community update has uh, interviews with various people. In fact, a while back, a couple months ago, I did a 20, about a 25 minute um, interview with the resume writers uh, that are coming out to speak. So you get a sneak peek, that's in there. Uh, we have an interview with the DES director, with Goodwill, with a lot of other services that are in there. And then the third bucket is CC webinars. That is this event today that's happening. We're going to pop that into that uh, section later today. So if you want to go back and review any of the content, that's going to be there for you. Thank you so much to our volunteers. You guys, it takes a ton of people to make this program happen. And we have people all over the virtual world right now supporting us. So thank you, Beth, Tina, Penny, for being our on-site moderators today in the back end, making sure everything's working. Um, and then the Resume Writers Council of Arizona and the army of other volunteers and keynote speakers that make everything happen. All right, so I am, uh, I would love to just do a call out to this. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. In our values, we will never ever charge anybody to attend any of our events. If you feel so called to donate, either now or after you land, we would love it. Just like all other organizations, we have been severely impacted by COVID. And so we are doing everything we can to keep operations going. Uh, it takes $42 for us per person to run this program. And so I know it's cliche, but like even a $5 donation is great. So if you feel so called, um, we're going to drop in the link to donate and we would love your help. Or if you know anyone who would like to give to a nonprofit that's trying really hard to serve community in the best we can, We'd really appreciate it, you guys. We want to be around a long time. We want to serve a lot of people. So thank you so much for your heart if you feel so called to give to what we're doing. 
All right. So let's see, I covered everything. Oh, just another thing real quick before we leave. If you can drop in the chat how you heard about us, I would love to know that. We would love, love, love to know how you heard about us and then tell everyone you can about us. Because it, we're in such a union that we can serve a lot of people, right? So let us know how you heard about us. Oh, LHH the, and Julia Turan, she's awesome. Lynn, thank you. I'm gonna be pushing more stuff out on LinkedIn. Uh, so also, if you are not getting our new email or our emails on Monday mornings, check your junk folder. We switched over to a new email provider. And so sometimes when you do that, it takes a little bit of time for basically you to be validated as somebody who's not uh, spamming people. So uh, check your junk email. If you're not getting our emails, let us know. Contact at careerconnectors.org and we will uh, make sure you're on our list. Thank you for attending today. Thank you for being part of our program. We are praying for all of you that you land into the career of your dreams. Have a great week. Bye.